the best of L'Oreal. Hi, I'm Laura Ray. Recently, I asked you what you wanted to see a one brand tutorial of. Was it L'Oreal, CoverGirl, Revlon, or Maybelline? And overwhelmingly, you chose L'Oreal. So today, I'm going to share with you my all-time favorites from L'Oreal, some new products, some older products that aren't talked about anymore that I still use and love so much. Let's start right now with a brand new brow product. I'm really loving. It's their L'Oreal Infallible Brows. Now this is a liquid product. It has a small applicator with a plastic wand that has a little bit of an arch to it. And I would suggest getting off as much product as you can to start with if you decide to use this because it is very wet. It's a very wet formula. Now, what I've been loving about this is that it builds your brows, and especially for those of you with fine brows like mine, it catches on to the hair and lasts. It says up to 24 hours. When I go to wash it off, it's still all there. So that's great because sometimes powders, especially if you have fine brow hair will dissipate as the day goes on. Now what I like to do is do like a coat, let it dry, uh, and then build on that. So I go and work on the other brow and just sort of lightly go over the hair. I think when I first started using products like these, one mistake I made was going in too heavy, not getting enough product off the applicator. The other mistake I would say is not going in different directions. So I would maybe just go one way, but the best way to apply this is then brush the opposite way. You can also brush up and down, just all different directions so that the hair is coated. Just like if you were combing uh, conditioner or anything through your hair, you're going to comb it and really work it in. This needs to be worked into the brows. And then what I've been doing is letting it dry a moment while I do something else for makeup. And then I go in with a little spoolie and comb it out so that everything is well blended. So I'm going to go ahead and comb through with my spoolie. Wow. To me, these look very natural. You don't see any drawn in lines like you would with a pencil. So I would have to say of all the products, and I've tried pretty much all of them that L'Oreal's come out with for brows, this would be one of my top ones, if not my favorite. So let's take a look at the infallible brows. Those are pretty nice. I like a natural brow. Now let's move on to primer. Now, a few months ago, L'Oreal came out with this great primer, Prime Lab. It's called Advanced Derm Primer. And the whole thing about this is they put in skincare. So it says 1% AHA, LHA, and BHA complex. And this is supposed to help you over time if you use it every day. I can't talk up to that because I try out so many primers. So if I were just buying this, maybe over months and months, I would notice a difference, but I'm never giving it that opportunity. And even with that, I use so much skincare. Who would know whether it was the skincare, which it most likely would be, or this? But that is their claim. Even though it's in a tube, it's liquidy. So shake it up. I haven't used it in a few days and I just tried to put some on and it was a little bit watery. So I would suggest either shaking it or moving it in the tube like this. So this one is got a light pink tone to it. And I'm just going to put this around the nose and any areas I would normally use any other primer. I don't put any primer all over my face. I know that's something I did when they first came out. I would just cover my whole face with it. What I do now is I spot prime. So I go to the areas I know maybe fine lines to fill in 
uh, also the pores in the nose for sure because that's where my makeup wears off. So when I'm using a primer, I'm doing it to smooth the skin, get rid of texture, and fill in fine lines. So that's pretty much the type of primers that I look for, which I think most mature women, that's what we're looking for. Now, what I also can tell you is it has not bothered my sensitive skin. And what I liked about this, it was geared towards pore minimizing. So let's take a look. I feel this has less of a silicone feel than some of them do, yet it does do a nice job on the pores. Now I've got some of those products on my base that I want to dry. Let's go ahead and do the eyes. I had to really think about this because L'Oreal eyeshadows have never been my top favorite, but there's one that has blown my mind for years and years that we're going to do today. And we're going to do a one shadow, very simple look, the infallible shadows. Now the shade I'm going to use today is Amber Rush. And this is just so beautiful. These, if you've never used them, they are a pressed powder. And when they go on the eyes, many of the shades give you a multi-dimensional look. They're just so absolutely beautiful. At one point I had, I think, almost all the shades. But my favorite were Sunshine. There's also a shade called Iced Latte that I love so much, a much lighter shade. The Sunshine shade, Eternal Sunshine, I believe is the shade name. It has more of a golden look to it. So beautiful. They have a silver shade. So, so many, but Amber Rush is just one of those I think would look good on any eye color and is super easy to use. So L'Oreal's never made an eyeshadow primer that really stands out to me. So I'm going to ask you for a little forgiveness and I'm going to use my Sur May today on my eyes as a primer and then we'll put the shadow. Although I think this particular shadow I have used without primer and it stays really well because of the formula. But I want to uh, blank out some of the discoloration in my eyes and we'll apply this. I could have applied concealer, but it just won't last as long on my eyes. So let's go ahead. Now you can use your finger with this. I have clean hands. You can just rub right into the pot and press on the lid. That's what a lot of people have done with these shadows. I like to go in with my finger and then blend with a brush. So that's what we're going to do today. Look at this color. If you asked me what eyeshadow should I use from L'Oreal, my instant answer would be one of these from the Infallible line in a shade that you loved. So these are just amazing. I remember a time when I would just wear this shadow every day, every day. Now, a friend of mine had the most beautiful eyeshadow on one day, and I asked her, what are you wearing? This was recently. This was uh, maybe a year ago. And she said, oh, it's one of those L'Oreal Infallibles in the pot. So, and it actually was the shade. I said, Amber Rush? And she said, I don't know the shade like you know those shades. I'll go check and I'll get back with you. I said, I would be willing to bet you it's Amber Rush. And it was. I was right. I like to just use whatever's on the mobile lid to bring it up. And I'm going to run the brush way back here because I can't always get to the back of my mobile lid with my finger because my eyes are so deep set. So I'm going to take the brush. That's another reason I like this Jillian Dempsey brush. I can get back in the back of my mobile lid and really blend that. So that's what I want to do. And I'm just going to lightly go under the brow just so it doesn't, you don't see such a contrast. I could even pick up a little bit on the brush. 
and then bring up a little into this. I Another option would be to take bronzer and bring a little of that when I put my bronzer on. But I think this is so beautiful. So that is my favorite, Amber Rush. Eyeliner was such an easy pick for me because I love the age perfect line. This is actually a line they geared towards mature women. The eyeliner does not budge. I tried one and then ordered another. I may have even had another shade at one point, but today I'm going to use the brown. The shade is actually just brown. 102 is the number. The other shade I have here is a charcoal. And this is a little lighter, a little softer than black, which I love that they provide something a little softer, but a deeper tone. What I love about these, they're retractable and they don't budge. Now, I don't use any liner in the waterline, so I can't answer that for you if it works in the waterline. But boy, this works as a great liner. And I'm just sort of moving along the lash line. And this is so soft that I use it in the outer third of the eye just to give a little shape and then join them together at the corner. So I just lift the eye a little so I can get it in there. And that really gives some definition to the eyes. I rarely go without eyeliner because I feel like it makes such a difference. Another thing I like to do is take a small brush like this Refer 3, like a pointed brush or a flat brush, and just sort of go along the lash line while I still can move the product and soften the line. Especially in the lower part of the eye, I don't want it to look too much like a drawn on line. And then I always keep Q-tips handy because things are falling sometimes and just go under the eye. I like to take my micellar cleansing water and just wet the Q-tip. I'll wet that like this, just sort of roll it in the product and then clean up under the eye like that so that I don't have smudges before I apply any concealer or anything. All right, so we've got this eye with liner. Let's go ahead and put some on the other side, and then we'll get on to a brand new mascara. Tell me in the comments What's your favorite L'Oreal product? I'm assuming if you're watching the video that you like L'Oreal. If there's something you don't like, you're more than welcome to share that too. But we're always looking for favorites. There's so much makeup to try. So I usually focus more on the things I'm loving. But if you'd like to see a video of products that didn't work too well for me, let me know in the comments too. All right, so that's the L'Oreal Age Perfect Satin Glide Liner. I really agree with them. It's a satin glide. It's so smooth, so beautiful on the eyes. Now let's go into a new mascara that probably many of you've purchased. If you have, let me know in the comments. But the telescopic lift. I really do like this. I know this mascara had a lot of um, drama at the beginning when it first came out, but and it came out at a weird time, like a bunch of companies released mascaras. I found myself buying so many to try. Maybelline had come out with their uh, Falsy, a new mascara. It seemed like I was trying so many uh, so I did mention this after a little bit of the drama settled down, and I really did like it. I wanted to use it for a while before I talked about it. But what I do like is it sort of grabs the lashes down at the base. So that's always sort of a hard thing to catch those lashes, and you really can with this. 
and the way the brush is designed, it's sort of like a built-in comb. So you can load the product and then sort of comb it through. So it is a different design than most mascara brushes are. I've always liked uh, L'Oreal Mascara. Uh, the Lash Paradise really stands out to me. I like a lot of the Lash Paradise line. That line seemed to be so good. They came out with a lot of things that were top notch. All right, so let's take a look with no mascara and then with the telescopic lift. And here's our brush. I'm liking it. Now I get more of a lash, I feel like, with the Maybelline Sky High and the primer. I don't think I've ever tried the primer with this. That'll be the next step. I'll have to try that because I find the Maybelline, the Sky High primer works with any mascara. So you don't have to feel you're trapped into buying the Maybelline Sky High. I think they work great together. But if you already had mascara open at home and you're like, I don't want to buy another mascara, but I want to try the primer. I've used the primer with CoverGirl mascara. It really helped that. So I've tried it. I don't even remember all the ones I've tried it with, but I have tried it with multiple mascaras. And just like any other primer, it really helps. So I think I've coated most of my lashes. Now, another trick I like to do is take this brush I've spoken about, the Delium Bent brush, get some product on it, on the tips, and maybe even get into places that I can't get with a brush because of the shape of my eye. Like, look at how great I can catch those outer lashes. I'm hitting on lashes I didn't even know were there. And the inner. This is where I feel this really helps a lot. More so than the middle of the lashes. I can really catch things that my eye shape is just too deep set to catch. And then pull up on the eye a little bit and get at the base. This will give me more definition and a fuller look to the lashes. There, that's better. I think that really does improve it. Then I like to go in and hit these lower lashes that are just not, you can't even see them really if I don't put a little something on them. I don't heavily coat them, but I like to do a little bit. All right, so I think the eye stands out on this side much more than the other side. It's worth the effort. Now I'm gonna go ahead, let's finish this eye off and get some mascara on the lower lashes. You could use the brush. I'm actually finding that this is working pretty well. I'm just lightly touching. So it's not that you can't use the brush. I just think it's easier not to get uh, like glumps or like, see how I have more product here. So when I'm using this brush, I have a little more control and I like that. I'm just going to go over them a little bit. And I feel like it's a little safer too. I'm not going to get hit the wand too hard. Let's go underneath. And I'm just sort of stamping at the base of the lash hair. All right, there we go. So that is the telescopic lift, one of my all-time favorite mascaras from L'Oreal. I really do feel this gives my lashes lift too, which is great because you can eliminate using a lash curler. I try to when I can because I feel like any lash curler is pulling on the hair of the lashes and I don't want my lashes to fall out. So when I can, I rarely use a curler actually. I use it sometimes in videos because people want to see me using a curler or they want to see a difference in the lashes. But I feel like the telescopic lift gives me all the lift that I need. Now let's move on to foundation. I have used L'Oreal foundation probably more than any brand 
in the drugstore because I remember even as a teenager using L'Oreal because the dermatologist recommended it. Usually he would say L'Oreal or Clinique for foundation at that time, which would have been like 1980. 1981. So as far back as then, I have had some kind of L'Oreal foundation, usually in my rotation. Today I'm going to use the True Match, and I'm using the shade N4. Now recently, I talked about uh, the DeBronzy, the Drunk Elephant DeBronzy Drops, and many of you said, well, those are a little out of my price range, or I just don't want to spend that much. I used the L'Oreal, and what they were talking about was this, Lumi Glotion. So I'm going to be using that today. I had purchased that when it first came out. It's been out for a while, and you could mix this. You could mix it in with your sunscreen. You could mix it in with a moisturizer if you wanted to put it, say, on your arms. I'm going to put a little bit right into the foundation to replace the DeBronzy. So let's see how that looks. I'm just taking my glass palette and mixing this up. One of you recently asked for me to link the glass palette and would you believe they didn't have it anymore? So I will look. I've had this glass palette in the description of my video for several years now. It's great for mixing. But I also recently bought a different one to try that's not glass, that's like a steel. So I could link that for you. But look at how beautiful this looks. This, by the way, N4 is my summer shade. I don't ever sun worship or lay in the sun. I haven't since maybe I was an early teen. I am always covered up. But I do go out for walks. I'm walking into the grocery store just running errands and I pick up a little color in the summer like most people do because it's extremely sunny here in Florida. I've lived in Florida all of my life, so I'm used to it. I know that in the summer my skin tone is going to deepen a little bit. I am loving this. With the Glotion, it gives much more of a glow than I usually get from just using the L'Oreal True Match because that's more of a satin finish. I love how natural the True Match looks. It's a thin foundation if you've never used it. It's not super thin like runny. You can see it's holding on to the glass palette. It's not running, but it is thin and it's buildable. I love that. I don't really like heavy foundations anymore. So if you look this side with the True Match and this side without any foundation, it really did even me out. I like that this doesn't get in my fine lines. It doesn't dry too quickly where I can't work with it. So, and of course, I love putting this on the most with my Stands Out sponge. I have used brushes, of course, and I just feel like brushes give a heavier coverage. I want it to look really light, and there's enough pigment in this where it covers the discoloration in my nose and cheeks, which is where most of us have our discoloration, the high points the sun hits on, and I will get a little discoloration like in there. And I've always had more uh, broken capillaries and redness in the nose. I have a lot of allergies. So I rub my nose, blow my nose a lot. And so this helps with that. But I still would either go in with a little extra here. That helps. Or concealer. I usually put concealer in those areas. So if you have any broken capillaries anywhere in the face... A lot of people get them in their cheeks, then I think this is a nice base, but you still may need a little bit of concealer. So here is the L'Oreal True Match in N4. 
Let's go on to a little bit of bronzer. This was easy because I really like a matte bronzer. And the L'Oreal Infallible, they came out with this maybe a year and a half ago. I purchased the shade Light Medium. I would say right now, because I've sort of changed my thoughts on bronzers, I would have gone for light. I really like a buildable bronzer that it starts light and I can just keep putting on powder until I get the intensity. But this light medium is pretty nice. L'Oreal is one of the brands I would say that has the most shades in a bronzer. I really like that they came out with so many shades so you can get more of a customized look instead of just like light, medium, deep. They came out with these in-between shades like light, medium. So I really love that about this. And again, there's no shimmer in it, no glitter. It's just a nice, beautiful uh, matte bronzer. You can even bring it up under the brow a little bit, especially if it's so buildable like this one, just to bring the look together. Wow, that really looks nice on the skin. So this is Light Medium, the L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour Fresh Wear Bronzer. While we're talking about the Infallible line, let's talk about their blush. They came out with a whole new line of blushes. I was down for that. I immediately ordered it. And this particular shade is number 10 and it's called Confident Pink. I love the names that they come up with. L'Oreal has some really good names for their products and I just tap in really softly. I'm using an angled brush. I love angled brushes for blush and just tapping it. Look at how much pigment right away. Beautiful. I've been wearing this and it really lasts beautifully on the skin. And I'm wearing a pink top today, like a dusty pink. So I thought this would really look like it all works together. I like my makeup to work with the clothing I'm wearing. Do you do that? I've always done that. I like for the colors to all work together. And now I still go in with my sponge and sort of blend a little bit and push the product into that sort of just melts it all in together. And I find that the True Match Foundation really holds on to any bronzer any blush it just really holds on to the product so i like that about the foundation too this is the shade confident pink i am loving it now you could go in much stronger with it i wanted a very soft look so i was careful about how much product but you can see that this is very pigmented when i first put it on so i use it with a light hand I wanted to show one other favorite blush. I love this line, the Age Perfect. Now this is a new shade. I have had other shades of this. I recently purchased the Berry because I was thinking ahead to fall and what blush looks I could coordinate with lips and everything else. Let's put a tiny bit of this on to deepen the look. I just think this formula is one of their best. I love the peach shade I have, and this looks gorgeous too. Now this blush has a little bit of luminosity to it. Definitely no glitter, no sparkle, nothing. But just when I look at it on the skin, it reminds me of how like the hourglass powders have a luminosity to them without any glitter or anything. So that's probably why I like this line so much because I do like that little bit of luminosity to the cheeks where it's not super noticeable, but you just look really healthy. Now I am going to get a little glow on. This is an older product. I bought this because so many people had said this was like a dupe for the De Bronzy. It totally is not. It's not even close. It's like a whole other consistency. The Drunk Elephant de Bronzy is almost the texture of water. This has a real thickness to it. 
And so I'm going to use a little bit of this, like a drop or two, so minimal, on the cheeks. Now this will give you that sort of Charlotte-esque look. Look at how brightening that is. I'm just going to put one dot, actually. But I do like this product. Now when I bought it, it looked so goopy. And I thought, what in the world? This is never going to work. But I just took the wand even and just touch on the outside. I don't even always um, squirt the product out. But I did want you to know there's a thickness to it. It is not a very liquidy, runny kind of product. And you do need to go right in and start blending it. It's not something you're going to lay on the skin for very long. But look at how pretty that looks. I ended up loving it. I didn't really love it at first. I thought it was sort of a clunker. But then I really ended up loving it. Now it also comes in a different shade. It comes in one that's like a golden, number 508. And this is very gold looking. Let's see, maybe we'll add a little of that too. It can't hurt, right? So again, I just take a little bit off the dropper and then just hit a drop. You can see that is really yellow looking, very gold. So I would say definitely too, if you have a deeper skin tone, you might love the gold. Those two blended well together too, so it sort of gives you more of a multi-dimensional look. But my favorite for my tone would be the pinker one, the number 507, which is called Daybreak. And this one is actually 508 Golden Hour. So those are the two from L'Oreal. They're called the Glow Amour. And there you go. Right now, I don't have a L'Oreal concealer. I have used many over the years. I have to say my favorite concealers are not from L'Oreal. I love so many from other brands. I recently talked about the CoverGirl stick that I thought was a great dupe for the NARS concealer that is brand new. So that's one I love Winky Lux. Winky Lux makes one of my all-time favorite concealers. But when the uh, YSL Touche Clot, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, uh, came out, drugstore brands at that time tried to dupe it. Maybelline came out with one that I do like so much. And L'Oreal came out with their Magic Lumi. So I thought we would put a little of that on. Remember these products where they twist up at the bottom, it goes into the brush. Now these are actually pretty expensive products because if you look at the amount of product you're getting, it isn't a lot. There's only about this much product in here and you tend to go through them. Now, one of the biggest problems with using the brush is what you see here. When you twist it up, like a hunk of product will come out too quickly and will hang on to it and you wouldn't want that amount. So I'm going to take my Delium brush. This is the Golden Triangle. It's on a slant like this. It's a great brush. And I'm going to just take my finger and get very little. We're just going to brighten the under eye. You can also brighten your cheek with this. So we'll put some there strategically and start using this brush. I do love this for the inner corner because I tend to look darker there. Of course, the Sorme helps with that, so I could even add a little Sorme there if I felt that it looked too dark when I was done with the look. Let's go ahead and we'll put some along the cheekbone. I'm going to blend this out. So if you're looking to brighten areas of the face, this is a really good replacement for the Touche Clot. Now, I still think that is amazing because it seems to be a little more emollient, more uh, moisturizing than the L'Oreal. But I think, you know, not everyone is going to want to pay that kind of money for a product like that. So for those of you looking for an alternative 
then I think this is a really great way to get that brightness in the under eyes and in other areas without spending a lot of money. Another thing you could do is if you have dry under eyes, double moisturize. I will often do that. I'll put my moisturizer on, uh, the eye cream rather, put my moisturizer on, and when that area under the eye has dried, I go in a second time. I might just go back and take that eye cream if I feel my under eyes are still a little dry and reapply it. So there's times of the year when I put on a little extra eye cream to keep that area the way I want it, moisturized. So here's the Magic Lumi, and you can see that definitely really brightened my under eyes, didn't it? Now I see that I blended into my blush here a little bit. I'm gonna go back and put on a little more blush before we finish it with the lips. I have some great lip products. I just wanna bring my blush back up a little bit. Now, another thing you could do if you wanted a little more brightness under the brow is take a little bit on your brush. I would use something really thin. I'm gonna use the Jillian Dempsey brush I have. If you wanted to sculpt under the brow, you could put just a tiny bit of product, see how little I'm putting, and just blend that. Now, I had put bronzer in that area, but some people like a brighter, lifted look, so I did want to show you that. That sort of lifted the eyes. Let's move on to my favorite topic, lips. I have a few things I want to show you. First of all, the most iconic lipstick that L'Oreal's ever come out with, the most famous lipstick is Fairest Nude. I would be willing to bet that. Now, this nude it was Pinky Nude before we had Pinky Nude. This came out way before Charlotte Tilbury. Any of her line, I think, even started. So this shade has been around a long time. I've repurchased it many times. Now, I don't have a L'Oreal uh, lip liner right now to share with you. I feel like Ferris Nude looks so much prettier with a lip liner. But I'm going to go ahead and put it on for you. I have a little leftover lip mask from my sleep. So I'm going to dab that off and let's try Ferris Nude. Now I've had people say this sort of washes me out. I think again with a lip liner it can really look so much prettier and give a little more color to it. And also keep in mind what is your natural lip color. Mine's very deep purpley mauvey. So I'm gonna get a different look than you would when Danielle wears this. It's so much brighter on her. It looks like a whole different color. So this is Fairest Nude. Well, what I wanted to do is actually blend. I love mixing lipsticks. This is True Red, number 315. Now I'll show it to you on its own in a moment, but I wanna show you what a beautiful pink I made mixing true red because you might have reds at home that are just sitting around not being used because you don't want to wear a strong color like that. So I like to take this and we're just going to mix it. Now look at what a pretty shade of pink that I made with the true red and the Ferris Nude mixed together. So look in your lipstick collection. You might be able to make so many new shades with lipstick you already own that you love, and maybe you even have those shades. Some of you I know might even have those too. Now let's take a look at Just True Red on its own. My husband loves red lipstick. And for so many years, I never wore red. I didn't like red on myself. And I'm going to wipe off this lipstick too because it's got some of the Ferris Nude on it. And then I sort of changed my technique. Instead of doing the lipstick like I normally would across the lips, I started dabbing it. 
pressing it into the lips and I liked the way it looked because it was more like a stain than so much lipstick on my lips before the red was just too heavy. So I'm going to try that. Now see, I am loving this and I'm going to take my finger to blend. And that's true red stamped and blended. Now I really love that. I think that's so soft. It looks almost like a lip balm, but I feel it stays on better than a lip balm. Lip balms tend to not last super long on my lips and I have to keep reapplying. When I do this more like a stain, there's so much more pigment in a lipstick like this than would be in a lip balm. So I get more longevity that way. One thing I've always loved about L'Oreal lipsticks is they seem to stay up with what is out on the market in the high-end beauty market. So a lot of the shades you can find a dupe for in L'Oreal. Now this reminds me a lot of NARS gloss. This L'Oreal gloss, I love the formula of this one. I believe this is the Paradise line, but I will link it because the packaging doesn't have any name on it. It just says L'Oreal Paris, and this is number 20, the shade Celestial Blossom. And we'll put this on top. I just think this formula is beautiful, very shiny, not sticky at all. So this is one of my favorite glosses because it gives a lot of shine and no stick. Now we're going to move on to one last lip product from L'Oreal. This is brand new. Now this is one of their matte uh, liquid lipsticks, number 115 Snooze, and it is L'Oreal Infallible line. Now the packaging is so luxe. Take a look at that. You've got this silver, it looks almost like jewelry here. This shade right away caught my eye because I thought that's very Charlotte-esque. It looked like a pinky nude, and I was down for that. Now, what I love about this, because I've worn it a few times now, is it doesn't budge. It lasted so long on my lips and didn't look dry. It has a doe foot applicator with a point, so it's easy to get like in the Cupid's bow. I'm going to start there. Immediately, I do not feel any dryness to it. It's going on very much almost like a lip gloss. I do notice a little bit of a moussey texture, but not as thick as some I've tried that have that mousse texture. Because of the point, I can sort of use it like a lip liner and go around the edge. And it has a little bit of a satin finish. It is not super matte, so it doesn't seem to be showing the lines in my lips. And this is a pretty deep color. This is pretty intense. I would like to try it in a lighter shade too. But let's take a look again. This is number 115. I really love it and it looks great with the Amber Rush on my eyes. These two shades really work well together. If I wanted an even warmer look, I like the little bit of pink though. I was thinking of using the uh, blush I talked about, the Age Perfect, in more of a peach shade if I'm using this eyeshadow and these lips, but I'm really just liking a little bit of pink to the cheeks. I think it looks really healthy. Let's take my hair down and we'll take a look at the final look. I really do love L'Oreal. I think the final look, everything really came together. 
Let me know in the comments, was there any product you really liked or you didn't like? Maybe you've tried something it didn't work for you or something that worked great. We would love to hear that. Let me know if you like this kind of video where it's all one brand and which brand you would like me to talk about. I believe second place in the poll that I did went to Revlon. So I will look again in a few days because more people will vote and we'll see if the voting changes. Right now, more than 50% of you voted for L'Oreal. So that's why I did the video today. All the links for these products that I used are in the description of the video. Just hit the more button. Thank you for shopping those links. You are the sponsors of my channel. So I get a small commission and that helps me to purchase these products so I can demonstrate them for you and tell you my experience with them. I love you all so much. Have a blessed week and I'll see you soon.